So I'm boiling some leaves at 1.30 a.m. My friend Lux gave me all these heckin' awesome leaves that I think are maple leaves or oak leaves, I don't remember. But I'm deleting all of those microorganisms. Hopefully no insects are in this. I don't know. But they're dying. <laughs> and this is to prevent mold and invasive species and whatnot for my beetles. They're gonna love this. They're gonna eat the leaves and hopefully not each other. Beetle breed, and then you drop the phone in the soup. <laughs> it looks like a volcano. <laughs> this one's not as interesting yet. Like wet cereal. Soup, 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 soup. S soup. <laughs> So I've had a second death scare. This time it was Chip, one of my two females, which I was one million percent convinced she had died. Long story short, she was spasming and was only reacting with ganglia. Her face didn't move at all. She was stuck upside down and wouldn't do the behavior to flip herself over. So I kind of assumed that she was just running on ganglia and then already died and she was also turning the much grayer blackish color that they turn when they stop producing the wax and she was spasming significantly and the with her first pair of limbs the second pair of limbs barely moved and then the hind pair was paralyzed unless it was interacted with in which case she would just attempt to walk forward through the ganglia for anyone who doesn't know Insects don't have as much of a centralized brain as we do. Their body runs on ganglia, which is basically like little reactionary brains. So the insect can be dead and still move around a bit. But she is awake now. There's like a little... St Oops. <laughs> see, she's flipping over correctly. But there's like a little stain. You can see right there where she was upside down all night. And look how many times she's pooped. She's pooped this many times in just like two hours. So hopefully she just really needed to poop. Also on her underside, you can see she is absolutely covered in the black bile-y substance that they make when they're angry. They spew it out of their mouth or when they're angry or when they're upset. But she's doing a lot better now. So I'm going to go ahead and return her to the bin. I have no idea what happened, because unlike before, where the little male was just so scared that he just decided not to move, she was not playing dead. She was in the actual death pose for insects with her legs crossed and everything. And she had just stopped moving for like six hours upside down in that dead pose. I could not flip her over because insects are very top heavy. So oftentimes when they aren't limp, they will just roll onto their backs accidentally and not be able to get up. She's acting normally now. I'm thinking maybe she had a seizure or something, and just because beetles don't breathe on purpose, oxygen just kind of goes in them, and they don't really have oxygen carriers in their blood. Their blood just kind of pools around. I'm thinking something was seriously wrong with her, but she just is alive now. So I'm going to go ahead and get her out of the bucket and put her back in. Just look at all those poops. She was really clogged for a while. Okay, I'm gonna try and get her up. <laughs> there we go. Hello. You can see the bile stain. Ooh, apple. And she's behaving perfectly normal again interesting but that's why you always gotta have like a cup to put these little nerds in they they will just pretend to die for so long i it was very unnatural though she was not playing dead something was actually wrong with her but uh she's doing good now yep they are also i have noticed very difficult to wake up when they are asleep like they just kind of conk out for a long time
Welcome to making a beetle terrarium, very naturalistic. We've got the cocoa fiber, the core, and some disinfected leaves dooting around. We're going to be making a breeding terrarium for Asbolus varicosus. Don't ask me why it's named after a centaur, I don't know. But this is our first layer. We got two to three inches of core with some leaves mixed in for the larvae to consume. Now what's important to remember about these beetles is that they are cannibalistic and they will eat each other. So if I do see them, I'm going to try and remove them and set them elsewhere. As it is starting to become summer, that is the best time for the beetles because it rains here in Arizona, most often during the summer. That's when they make their babies. So we're gonna be going ahead and making the other layers. So we got our first layer, the core. What's the second layer you may ask? Well, it comes from Home Depot. Oh god, it's got a hole in it. It's got a hole in it. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna add some layers of our compost. Wow, look at that. It's no longer wet because it's been open for too long. But we're gonna go ahead and put this in here. That is really dusty. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Camera's gonna have to breathe that in. Now we want to break the bigger pieces. I'm breathing it in so much. Oh, okay. I should have wet this beforehand. This is fine. <laughs> but when, if you're following this for some reason, it will be wet, because yours will be fresh. But mine right now is very, very dry. So I'm just making it into this second layer. <laughs> okay, this is why I didn't vacuum yet. Okay. Now we're gonna add a little bit more. Yeah, a lot more. Oh yeah, don't you love the feel of that in your nose and teeth? But yeah, see, there's little pieces of wood inside the compost, little pieces of leaf. Now what's very important also is you don't want entire pieces of poopies inside your compost. That's what's normally in grass compost. This is just regular all-purpose garden soil, as you can see. People who are experienced with gardening may know beetles like to be in this. Thus is the way. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be spreading it around. The babies will eat the wood, they will eat the leaves, they will eat the dirt itself. Just breaking up the little pieces before we continue on. Now you may notice I'm getting a little explorative with this side being lower than the other side. That is because I am going to be experimenting because the adult beetles need to be fairly dry, but the soil needs to be fairly wet. A lot of people get confused and don't understand how deserts like Arizona work. That is how it works. Underneath the ground is wetter than it is at the surface. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and place that there for a second because how we're gonna do that is with the power of infomercials. So what we're gonna do <laughs> is we are going to place this like so, which will allow the depth of the soil to be wetter than the surface without disturbing the adults. So hopefully that's gonna work. Hopefully the infomercials don't lie and this will cause bubbles that will keep the soil wet. But we don't need this now. For right now, we need to finish adding in the soil. So I'm gonna lift this bad boy up. Hopefully not get too much dirt on the ground. But we've kind of already forgotten that. Yeah. Gonna continue breaking. What is this blue thing? There's a piece of, there's a piece of tape in here. <laughs> Microplastics. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that on the floor so I can clean up later. Green. Oh, there's another piece of plastic. What? Oh, that's more like a fabric. You also go on the floor. So I'm breaking up these little pieces because the insects are gonna need to burrow and if I don't break up the pieces, when they become wet, they're just gonna turn into like a solid rock. <laughs> so after I mix this up, I'm going to add some, that fell down. I'm gonna add some of our disinfected leaves. Now it's very important you don't just pick up leaves from outside because outside has a lot of pesticides and that is not very pog champ. By the way, I have five blue death fainting beetles, two females, three males, isn't that wonderful? They all have names. 
They are qu the queen, the thick queen. That's the largest female. Second largest is Chip, who's the one who just gave me a death stare yesterday. Or death stare, death scare yesterday. Chip is also a female. Then the next largest is Wide. He is a male, followed by Boneless, the original one, followed by Tiny, who is just marginally smaller than the other two. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, <laughs> start wetting this a bit. Now, as you can imagine, this was, should have been wet probably beforehand, but I didn't want to go get new ones. Now, after this is sufficiently wet, I'm going to go ahead and get my hands all dirty by going like this, mixing it up a bit. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and add in the big guns. Just sort of sprinkle this water about. That definitely didn't go on the carpet. What are you talking about? I already need to re-clean the glass, so this is fine. No, what out of here. I'm a professional. So now that we've added that, we're going to mix it up a little more. And then we are going to add in some leaves before adding some more. That's right. <laughs> now this is the substrate that the beetles are going to be going around in. It's fine, I'm going to vacuum anyway. So now we're going to get out some of our leaves. These came from my friend in Washington and I have disinfected them already. I recorded that a couple months ago, but still. Now I'm just gonna kind of crunch them up a bit and scatter them around because the beetles will eat these. So it is important to make sure that the beetles have some food and on the drier side, that is where the larvae are normally going to be, whereas the wetter side should be where the pupae go. So it's sort of like a balancing act. I'm trying not to drop them on the ground. It's sort of like a little bit of a balancing act. Now I'm going to distribute these a little more. Eh. There we go. That seems pretty wonderful a little bit of a layer and now I'm gonna mix them in a bit it's not really working <laughs> gonna attempt to mix them in a bit and then give up so now what we're going to do is we're going to get a mix of the clay as these two base substrates are what's going to hold most of the moisture the clay is where the beetles will actually pupate in So now I have clay soil from another friend, but this time actually from Arizona. Okay, time to not break the glass. Let's make even more of a mess. Are you ready for this? Get in position. Oh yeah. This, this is wonderful. This is exactly what I wanted. Okay, now we're gonna take that back. Ow, I just hurt my wrist. I'm gonna break up some of these clumps. This smells wonderful. I'm definitely not dying. But see how we're mixing in the clay soil now with the leaves and with that other substrate with the compost. Oh yes. We're gonna just gonna be breaking up these little rocky bits. I am going to need to go get more soil, but that's fine. I'll finish this up another day. Because this soil is just where the babies are going to be, the pupae. The adults are going to be up on top of this. So now that I've added that, I'm going to wet it a bit more and then add some more compost. Oh yeah. See how it's already flattening down? That's wonderful. It's exactly what you want. <laughs> No accidents, just happy little trees. So we're gonna add some more um, air toxins. Get this nice little mix. Isn't that just wonderful? Now I'm thinking I'm gonna add some, let's spread it around first of all. I might add some extra, but now you're already seeing how much of this terrarium is just the substrate. And that's just how it works with beetles. If you don't have the substrate, the beetles are not going to enjoy anything. 
Okay, now I'm just kind of packing it down. Partially because this will be packed down significantly once it is all wetted properly and once it's settled. Also because it makes it easier for the beetles, the babies, to roam around. The terrarium my beetles are currently in is much too dry, so the females basically hold on to their babies, their little eggs, forever. They can hold on to them for a good number of years, if I remember correctly. So hopefully, once they get into this nice terrarium, they'll instantly send their babies into the ground. I am going to add the rest of the soil. Ugh. Who's ready to breathe? Oh yeah, we're entering the dust bowl now. Yeah. Yeah, plant too many crops without cycling. Yeah, no beans. Beans are lame. We don't need to affix the soil with nitrogen, no. I'm gonna need vacuum so much. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, just like Mars. Okay, so we're gonna break up these rocks. This one is just actually a rock. Oh, that's interesting. That's cool. <laughs> Wonder what the last time this saw the light of day was. Oh, another rock. This is interesting. So natural. It's so natural and clay-like. By the way, clay soil has a finer grain. This is another rock. Interesting. Clay soil has a finer grain than sand, but not quite as fine as just clay. So what that means is when it's dry, it's very, 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 very dusty, as you've seen isn't that scientific? Very wonderful. I'm kind of clamping it down. This is all trial and error, but hopefully we can get this. And if you look on the side, you can see that sort of marbled texture of the, the soils, or the different kinds of substrate mixing. And that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to add some more moisture onto this side don't really need to but i want this to be much more of a dry side oh look we got some beans so i'm gonna flatten this down a bit we're not gonna be putting in beetles today but this is more or less what we've done we've got some gravel over here very interesting I'm gonna kind of bury these leaves <laughs> bye bye <laughs> bye bye break up these last little ow there's thorns on it thank you <laughs> after we pack this down i think this is gonna be good enough for today and i'll go ahead and see y'all the next part this might actually be enough for the adult beetles i think i'll get some more though let me not smack that full palm. And now I need to clean the glass. And if you come look on this side, you can see that sort of gentle turn down where this side has more depth than the other side in the substrate. This wet side will hopefully be doing pretty well. All right, that pretty much do it. I have some more soil. Might use that for babies. Yeah, look at the snakes climbing. <laughs> well, this has been Candy Eggs. Be seeing y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs>